All right, guys, Jump on Turtles here, back with another video. Sorry I did not get to make a video last week, but that's why I'm going to be uploading this video today, Sunday, as soon as possible, a little earlier than normal in the week, and hopefully I'll get a second one done this week. But it's Christmas, so probably not. Who knows? Today we're talking about Gallia, and I'm probably not saying that right. Gallia of the Endless, Endless Dance. She has haste. Other satyrs you control get plus one, plus one, and have haste. And whenever you attack with three or more creatures, you may discard a card at random if you do draw two cards. Um, I've been looking for a good red-green aggro commander for a while, and she just, just seemed to really fit. I don't know why I kept overlooking her. And I tried her out, and she's just been very, very fun to play. Um, since she has haste, I decided to go with a lot of hasty-like creatures just to help get that three creatures turning sideways, start getting the card advantage off her. Um, other cards that I put in here that are pretty notable, maybe Unnatural Growth. That card's kind of hard to play in here, but if you do get it off, it's... So powerful that you probably win the game. Great Henge, of course. Um, Ember Cleave. Just the regular aggro stuff. There's nothing too much to say about this deck, except a lot of things are prioritized if they had haste and special abilities like Shifting Ceratops. Um, we have Ogre, ba Ogre Battle Driver and Hellrider just for that super-powered like, turn sideways potential. And yeah, not a lot of ramp. We are running 40 lands, so we don't really need too much ramp. There's a couple things, um, all the things that make treasure tokens, like Prosperous Innkeeper, Magda, um, Captain Lannery Storm, stuff like that. Rhythm of the Wild, prevent some counter spells. And that's it. I mean, this deck is really simple. Just turn things sideways, get card advantage as much as possible, and just keep playing things. It can be real explosive. Um, it does have a problem against like the Heliod and the Lifelink decks, which we will see in the video following this but um yeah let's get into the games okay game one against salvala i really really like this deck this deck's been super fun i've been trying to find a good red green aggro commander and i don't know why i just kept overlooking the two drop um gala galia this is a pretty good hand so we will keep it Turn two, I think I want to go for Magda. Turn three, we could jump Gallia and um, play Blizzard Brawl. Um, if we draw a green source. Oh man, that's really good. Turn one, Tenacious Pup. We don't even really care about that Blizzard Brawl. The problem would be accidentally discarding it to Gallia. But really, I never really worry about it. Drawing two for one is usually going to be worth it no matter what. So that's how I've been looking at it in aggro. Card advantage just matters so much. Okay, so we made him a 3-3. I don't know why he did that. I guess just to draw a card. Like, the effect still happens from... Um, when he entered. And now I do triple the damage on the first hit, which is really nice. Next turn, Gallia definitely comes into play. Hopefully I can draw a green source. It's not a green source. Okay, so we don't need the Blizzard Brawl anyway. I think we play Gallia. Swing, trigger. We will take action. Oh, it's the mountain. That's cool. I'm hoping to draw a forest, but... Okay, we're good. Um... Just drawing any untapped land would be really nice. Okay, and there it is. So, we play Blizzard Brawl, Tenacious Pup, and Silvala. Put in the Bolt Hound. Yeah. So that would have been 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. He would have been a three anyway, maybe maybe two. Okay, let's go to the next game. They made a really bad play there, putting that Kenris transformation. It just gave me so much more damage so fast. I mean, the deck has a really good hand, and it was going to be explosive anyway. So let's go to game two. Okay, game two. Here we go. Heliod, Sun's champion. In the testing, I got my ass handed to me by a Heliod list. But again, it's all about... What you draw. Hmm. I mean, we could do turn two, Galia. I like this. This is pretty good. What's nice is if they go to kill Galia, 
early. Turn three, we can play Mass Vandal, exile the Gallia, and then decide to put him back in the command zone for the graveyard. I believe that's how that works. <clears throat> um, turn one, we're going to start with the Highland Forest. And they have a Speaker of Heavens, of the Heavens. Okay, so we're going to just put Gallia in. Attack for two. And they have an Arcane Signet here. Target creature gets plus one plus one to one attain. You gain one life, activate only as a sorcery. Okay. It's interesting. Okay, so we will put in the pick and then equip it, and then he is safe from taking lethal damage here. Swing for three. Because they want to get to that five devotion, I mean, they're not going to probably block. We get an extra land. Next turn, we can put in a gold spawn dragon. It's gold span dragon? Gold span dragon. I'm really bad with names, as you guys probably noticed if you've been watching my videos. <coughs> okay, they're getting a the life. They're going to put a counter somewhere. They're going to activate this guy, gain another life, put a counter on him again. That's cool. I would not mind trading though. So, just so you know. Okay, we're going to put the gold span dragon in. Auto pay. Swim with everything. Get a treasure. Seven to the face. They're gaining life though, so it's really like five. But we got two treasure tokens, which is really big. Ember Cleave can come in next turn. Um. Yeah, that's when he attacks, not when he deals damage. That would be super sick to put an Ember Cleave on, but we're going to get our Ember Cleave out next turn for sure. Their Devotion just went up by one. They play one more white card. When they need one more Devotion to turn Heli out on, and that's the one more they needed. Heli out is now alive. <clears throat> I mean, we could easily fix that with um, getting rid of something. So they gain six, put a counter on somewhere. Probably on Hell Yeah, I would guess. Yeah. Okay. Um. I mean, we have enough to just attack with this guy. Play that. Put that on him. Hit for 10. Put this guy out. And we still have that one floating, so let's put that over here because I'd rather him be a little bit bigger. Now we could just like trump chump block with Gallia if we want. This guy's gaining 11 every hit. It's pretty brutal. We need to get rid of him. Chaos Warp would be really nice off the top. But it is just a dream. I'm just damage to a player. So we could put this on him. Oh, that's going to hit our dragon, right? No, it can't hit the dragon. It can only hit um, four or less, I think, right? Three or greater. Three or, le three or less, so. Okay, they got rid of him. I mean, we can't just take it, so we have to block. Take eight. They gain a whole shit ton of life. Go to 30. We will move him. Uh, I didn't, shouldn't have done that, actually. I'm just used to doing it. That was bad. Play 
play that out. Play this guy. Go to combat. Put that on him. I mean, we're dead. Yeah, we are pretty much out of this game. We're not going to be able to keep up with that amount of life. I mean, it's just ridiculous. Uh, uh, Heliod is a problem for this aggro deck. I mean, it's probably just a problem for every aggro deck. All right, we are one and one, and we're going up against um, Niv Mizzet. I think that's Niv Mizzet. Five color Niv Mizzet. Yeah. Blah, 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 blah. Two tap lands. It's fine. We'll keep it. We'll keep it. Turn two, it looks like we go for a Kessig Naturalist. Turn three. Um, we're only going to have three mana. Probably just put Galia in then. I don't know. We'll see what we draw. Highland Forest to lead. Okay, that's a good draw. I don't know if that deck runs too many things early. I'm sure it does, but... It's a good draw. We did draw an untapped land, but we can't get the mana. So we'll play Gallia. We'll play this. We're not going to really be able to utilize that extra mana there. But we'll get five damage in, and that's fine. <coughs> Next turn, though, we can lead with um, Halana. Maelstrom Pulse on the Werewolf. Cool. So we will lead with Halana this turn. Put the counters on to Galia. Swing for four, bring them down to 16. We want to put as much pressure on as we can before they can hit that five mana to play Niv Mizzet. And whenever they do, hopefully we can be ready for it. Okay, there's an Arcane Signet. So next turn they will have that mana no matter what. Let's put Hellrider in. That'll give us the three that we need. Um, next to combat, put them on Hellrider just to spread our, our damage out. Swing for a lot of damage. Uh, that might be lethal, no? No, it's not lethal. Okay, we got rid of that guy, but we drew two cards. 9, 10, 11. Nope, there's one off lethal. Right? No, two off. Okay. Let's do this now for a forest. There's no secret. I'm going to get a forest. And the game's not loading. There we go. Every time I start to search for a card, that happens for me. But lately it's been okay, but yeah. They just paid too much for stopping grounds. Game four, and that looks like Garuk or Garrick, whatever you want to call him. I like this hand. It's not great, but it's cool. Drawing the fourth land will make it pretty good. And that is a Garrick that I did not expect. Wrath of the Wilds. Choose a creature card in your hand for tap. Perpetually gains plus one plus one. And perpetually gains cost one less. Draft a card for his... Okay, yeah, yeah. This guy. This guy. So the reason I did that is so maybe they feel comfortable turning him back sideways. I don't know. They probably won't do that, but you know, you can always wish for misplays and try to feed into him. If he swings for one, that's great. But he's probably gonna use him for his ability, I would assume. Okay, Murfolk Branch Walker. And there's a Rojas on the pot top. A Ronas, Ronas. I don't know why I thought it was Rojas. Okay, now, it would be really good if you put him in the graveyard, right? But I don't think that's what he's going to do now. 
Because then this guy could have came in and done some work. But we do have the Hasty Boy next turn. So I think we still go with the Cemetery Prowler. And nothing for him to target, but that's fine. It'd be really good if he had a creature to target, because then we could go like Mass Vandal, Moving Wall, Oddity. Huh. Okay. Well, that changes up what I want to do now. Um. It costs seven to transform. Let's go with Clothis. Because it means we're only two away next turn, we can turn him on. No attacks. And the dogs are barking. Let's activate again. Really looking for that land drop there. And there's a blast zone. Okay, Rois, Ronus comes in, doubles their power, right? Um, I think what I want to do here, actually he's one away. So let's think about this, let's think about this. We can't do that. And they have Vigilance. Okay, let's just take the 18. Because we're going to have some big bodies next turn. Put this guy out. Put this guy out. Um, but we're not going to attack. Because we got our indestructible. We got a 4-4. Four, four. We got some threats. I feel like Ronis comes in no matter what. We just blocked out with Clothis. I don't know if the Nullhide... Uh, Furrox is going to do anything. So he took off the ability. So he doesn't have Hex Group anymore. Huh. We are way behind in the aggro race, but we're pulling, we're pulling up, we're pulling up. Prey upon. Cloth this turns off. Get fucked. Alright, this might be a loss. This might just be a loss. <clears throat> I feel like in the aggro matchup, it's really just so many factors depend on if you're gonna win. Um obviously who's on the play matters so much, especially in a deck like this where I'm hasting, everything has like haste almost. Lots of stuff has haste. We're building around that, trying to turn sideways every turn, so um, also how explosive you are compared to the other person with the aggro deck. A Golos deck. A Golos deck without the zombie land. Is that even a thing? I mean, this hand is good. This hand is really good. Um, I don't remember if I was on the play or not, but if I am, I'm really happy about that. Because we do Ferocious Pop. We are on the play. They have a Ley Line out. That's cool. I still like Golas without that land. <clears throat> okay, we're going to put the Kessig Naturalist in here. <clears throat> Excuse me. Just because I want to start getting more lands because I don't have any more. I have no more lands to play. Um, next turn, we can swing for three, activate his ability if they don't kill anything. So I'm not expecting with all that black mana. Yeah, there we go. Cast Down comes in. Okay. Can't really do anything about that. We play Gallia, swing for three. And just try to keep turning things sideways and be hopeful here. Badly, badly need a land or a two drop with haste. Something of that nature would be um, amazing right now. Okay, there's the land. And that is so good. So, I think we bring in the Bolt Hound. He gets other creatures, so that's going to give us 5, 6, 7 damage. Also, we can get triggered with uh, him. I'm hoping not to lose any of these two, but it's okay if we do. 
Uh, we lost Reclamation Stage. I mean, I didn't really want to lose any of that, but at the end of the day, we got closer to a land for sure. Guaranteed there's a land closer to the top now. Hopefully it's right on top. We can put in Hellrider, turn things sideways next turn, and just be uh, very, very, very aggressive with that move. Okay, I think he kills the Bolt Hound. Mm, he killed Galia. He doesn't want me to draw anymore, but that's fine. We'll do that. We did not get a land, but it's okay. It's okay. We're going to um put in the Reckless Storm Seeker. Put a 1-1 counter on him. I mean, plus one attack on him. And haste, swing. Everything else gets pumped. We go for 6 damage to the face, bringing them to 6. I mean, Hellrider next turn would be so good. I mean, they might have a sweeper spell here. Okay, they have Golos. That's fine. Um, Golos cannot stop Hellrider right now. So... We could just draw this fourth land. I mean, it's not asking too much. There's 40. Ah, it's a land, but it's not the one. Okay, we do have haste on whatever we play. Tin Street Hooligan can't be blocked if I want. What can we do? What can we do? So we go to combat. We put that on him. No matter what, we win. No, we don't win. What am I talking about? I'm thinking of Hellrider again. Ah. That's fine. Do three. He goes to three. Again, Hellrider just wins by turning sideways next turn. But they have mana up, so that might not be the case. We also have a fifth land. Go for Hellrider. Hope that he resolves. I think he's not going to resolve, but... All attacks. Before attacks, there's going to be some kind of shenanigans here. If not, that's game. Okay. So, there is some kind of answer there for sure. But we're good there at three. We could top deck Lightning Bolt. That would be really good. There is a Lightning Bolt in here. Heart of the cards. Yu-Gi-Oh, come on. They're going to swing? No, they're not going to swing. They know that they're, they swing. There's a lot of hasties. All right, we're going to put the Guardian Project in. We don't really need to rush here. They could destroy it, whatever. Um, they have this... Mamma Jamma over here. Add one mana, make color, sack a treasure to draw a card. It's fine. Just end turn. Let him go. Hopefully next turn we can be like uh, Bramble Elemental, draw a card, make it a land, Galia, something like that. <clears throat> there are three, so... This card, two cards. Swings for three. I don't know why. They have some kind of answer over there. Play him. Hopefully we draw a land that doesn't come into play tapped. We can put Galia. Or we can draw another creature. It would be cool. Because we're swinging him for three. They're going to have to kill him. But they have the treasures to do whatever they want. Okay, and they killed him. Vraska's Contempt. Top deck land. Not a land. That's fine. We'll play Rhythm of the Wild. We'll play Shimmer Drift Veil on green. And then turn. They're running out of cards, though. So that is a thing to, to take note of. Also, Galia will be coming in with a plus one counter. So they're not attacking, they, they know they know what it is. They gained two life already. But we have a lightning bolt now. A little bit late. Uh, plus one counter on them. Trigger draw a card. Ooh, Nilia. No attacks, because we do not want to lose our Galia here. And end turn. Alright, Golos is going to use his ability. 
putting him at like low, low mana. He's got Airbus Intervention, doesn't really do anything. He's got Final Parting. Uh, I guess he can play that, but won't do zero? Yeah, it is zero. Okay. Uh, final parting, central library, two cards, put one of them in your hand, the other in your graveyard, then shuffle. Good card. I think they're running out of answers, though. They're looking for something to kill Galia here, obviously. To take his mind, I don't know what they're doing, but we're just going to sit here and wait, and Nilia comes in, not alive. One, two, three. Oh, that was end of turn. Fuck. Didn't realize that. It's Professor Onyx. So each opponent sacrifice a creature with the greatest power. Obviously, that's going to happen. We'll do that. Uh, move your commander to the command zone. Yes. That's good, because we can play her again. Draw another card. Pass to attackers. No attacks. We're going to lightning bolt their face right now, just to get them down to two. If we can draw another, or I don't know. We're, we're in a bad spot, but we're not in a, the worst position here. Let's see. We put in... Nilia won't trigger Guardian Project, so we'll just put in Galia again. Put a plus one counter, draw a card. Damn. We're in a tight spot. And end turn, we can't do anything else. Are you? Huh. What are you doing right now? Recording. Oh. <laughs> Sorry. It's okay. I'm just talking to myself over here. I know. I'm talking to cute. I'm talking to anybody who watches the video later. I like it when you show your crazy. <laughs> okay. They're at one. I had one whole piece of fuel. And then I drove home. Ew, Good influence for the, for the viewers. This don't is a, drink and drink. This is an adult stream. We can all be, adult, be adults here. And this is a not suitable for... Take our own culpability. What is it? This video is rated R. Or this, this video is intended for mature audiences. Yeah. Viewer discretion advised. I don't put that in front of these videos, though. Well, you should. When I'm interrupting them. Alright, we'll put Nilia in. And we'll put the They're at one fucking life right now. It's 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 sickening. Uh, activate. Magic. You, de you quit? Yeah, because it was sickening. <laughs> I'll put that in the graveyard. And then... And turn. You didn't even try out the microphone. I didn't have a chance to yet. Why are you making that face? You're gonna fall asleep at the movies. No, I'm not. You just gotta feed me more alcohol. Before. You're really gonna fall asleep. Yeah, I forgot it. about the alcohol part. No. I'll only fall asleep. I have if you no don't. money to feed you alcohol with. I have money to feed me alcohol with. Okay, then I'll feed you all the alcohol your little heart desires. Yeah. I have a statement and then a question. Okay. Okay, statement. I'll only fall asleep if I stop drinking. But if I keep it at this level, actually it has to be like one notch above this. Did level. they just kill themselves? Yes. Yes. Why would they do that? Fucking A. Three and two. I don't know if we would have won that game if they didn't kill themselves. But Why we won that game, so that's the game. Also, Thank you guys for watching. I'm Jump on Turtles. This has been another video. Sorry that I didn't make a video featuring last week. Uh, un unexpectedly featuring Jesse D in the background. I know that's a little different than normal guys. We try to keep it professional here, but you know we can't always just I have fun. You're the most a professional streamer on Twitch. Yeah, this Second isn't. Month. This is a YouTube. Oh well, can't you be the most unprofessional YouTuber on YouTube? I could be, but I'm not, so that would be lying if I said that. I am the most unprofessional streamer on Twitch, making YouTube videos. the most unprofessional YouTuber on YouTube. We could say most unprofessional you, uh, Twitch streamer on YouTube as well. Oh, yeah, that's a good one. So, uh, thank you guys for watching. You know what to do.